Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 17 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. So we got our bullet effect here, but once our meteor gets destroyed, it just disappears. We kind of want a nice little particle effect of all these meteors shooting out from this meteor that broke so that it'll look a little bit better. I'm going to try to make this really fast because it's really just up to personal preference. We're going to create a new scene here, it'll be a 2D scene, and we're going to add another one of those CPU particles 2Ds because I want this meteor kind of explosion to be a bunch of particles emitting from all different directions. So I'll click my CPU particles and make it the scene root so it becomes the root node and delete the node 2D. I'll also rename this to meteor effect. And we can go ahead and save this. I'll save it in my meteor folder as meteor effect.tscene. There we go. Now we can simply tweak all these settings for the particle system to how we want this to look and there's going to be one primary setting that we have to get right. So that setting is under the time here and it's called one shot. This means play the particle system once, emit everything that it's going to emit, and then stop. Don't keep respawning particles. So as you can see if I check this emitting box while I have one shot checked, the particles will spawn and then it'll stop emitting automatically. It won't restart. Okay, cool. Now it's really just personal preference. I'm going to change the um, I'm going to change under the drawing settings and add a texture to my particles, and I'm going to add this meteor small image that I have, and I'll drag it right into the texture here. So if we click emit emitting, we'll see a bunch of those uh, giant meteors kind of spawn. I think they're going to be a little too big, so I'm going to scale mine to about I don't know we'll say f uh, we'll say 30% of their size to make it really small, and we'll randomize that scale. We'll make it let's say 30% random so it'll just they'll all be a slightly different scale and we also want to make sure we turn off gravity so we'll make gravity set to zero and while you're testing this you can uncheck one shot and check emitting that way they keep kind of appearing and you can see what your changes are doing just don't forget to change that back at the end so I'm turning off gravity and that will basically make sure they don't just fall and accelerate and instead I'm gonna give them an initial velocity We'll try, I don't know, an initial velocity of 25, and we'll randomize that velocity a little bit we'll, so that they all have slightly different velocities. We'll randomize it by, you know, 50% random or so. And then we will change the direction and have the spread equal to 180. This means they will spread out and shoot in any direction, basically 360 degrees here. All right, so it's looking like something kind of neat. Next, I'm going to change the emission shape. Currently, they're all spawning at the exact same point. I want them to kind of spawn in a little bit of a circle, so they all have different start points. So I'll change the emission shape to sphere. And we can change the sphere radius to something like 20. And you'll notice that they're all kind of spawning around the point now in a 20 unit radius. So that's going to look a little bit better as the end product. I might make that a little bit smaller, like 15. Again, you can experiment with all of this. Next, I'm going to change the angular velocity, and we will set the angular velocity to something like, I don't know, 100, and we can randomize it a little bit, like 40 or so percent random, and that will give the spin to all these meteor particles, so they'll all be spinning in different directions at different rates. Alright, that's pretty cool. I think one of the final things I want to do here is add a color ramp. So under this color settings here, you'll notice that we can add something called a color ramp. And if we select this, we have to create a new gradient resource here, like so. Now if you click on this gradient, you'll see these two settings, offsets and colors. If you click the colors here, you'll notice that we have black and white. What this is doing is whenever a particle spawns, it's going to color it black. And as far as it gets away from the screen, it becomes lighter and lighter. It becomes tinted more white, or its normal color. So instead, we are going to change the first color to white, that way they start at their normal color, and we're going to change the second color to white as well, except we're going to bring the alpha, or the transparency, all the way to zero. This way, the particles will actually fade out the longer and longer they live. Speaking of, I'm going to go to my time here, and I'm going to extend the lifetime of these guys to like 10 seconds. So now you can see, they slowly begin getting transparent, the further and further on that they live until they so slowly completely disappear. Alright, so 
that should be about it for our particle system. I think the next thing we have to do is actually use it. And of course, we will have to add a script to this, but I'll wait to do that. So don't forget to check this one-shot box here, and we'll save our Meteor effect. Now over in our Meteor, inside the script here, whenever our Meteor dies, so whenever it gets damaged and its life is below zero, we want to spawn one of our Meteor particle effects. So to do that, we have to preload our Meteor effect so we can create an instance of it. So at the top of our Meteor script, we'll create a variable called pMeteorEffect. And we'll set that equal to preload, and we'll preload our Meteor Effect T scene, like so. Now, whenever our Meteor gets damaged and its life goes below zero, before we actually try to remove ourself, before we queue ourselves for removal, we'll create and add that Meteor Effect. So var effect, we'll set that equal to our p Meteor Effect instance. That will create a new instance of our Meteor Effect and we have to set its position to the current position of our meteor. So we'll say effect.position equals this meteor's position, wherever it's currently breaking and dying. And then we have to add the effect to the scene. To do that, we'll just get the parent node of our meteor, and we'll just add our effect as a child of our parent. And there we go. So let's see if this works at all. Hopefully if we shoot our meteor here, it breaks, but nothing happens. And that's because in our meteor effect here, we set it as one shot. And by default, that means it's not going to be emitting. So we have to add a script to our meteor effect. So we'll add the script to our meteor effect. I'll call it meteor effect.gd. And we can delete everything here. And we're going to create our ready function. So as soon as our meteor effect enters the scene tree, we need to start it emitting. So we'll set the emitting property equal to true. And now, hopefully if we run this, we will see when our meteor explodes, we get our particle system. So clearly I have some work to do. This looks awful. They're just all spawning separately. So the fix for that is to actually go to your particle system and set explosiveness equal to 1. This means all your particles will explode or spawn at the exact same time. So that'll make it look a little bit better. I also noticed that my scale was a bit too small, so I'll change that to maybe 40% of the size and make it a little bit less random. Now let's see how that works. When we go ahead and destroy our meteor, that's a little bit better. They all spawned at the same time, and they kind of all just spawn, spawn outwards. I'm going to have to do some visual work, but before we forget, whenever this particle system is finished, whenever it has completed its emission, we need to remove it from the scene tree because we don't want that particle system to just stick around even though it's completely finished. So we're going to go into our meteor effect script and we're going to go into our process function and we're going to say if we are not emitting, meaning if our particle system is done, we're going to remove ourselves from the tree at the end of the current frame. So now if we run the game and we destroy the meteor, we'll get our particle system, all the particles will slowly fade out and hopefully once all the particles disappear, our effect should actually disappear from the game. And we can check that by going to the remote scene tree over here. And we can go through here, and we can see that our meteor effect is nowhere to be seen. If we restart our game and click the remote tab, and we quickly open the game before a meteor goes by and we try to destroy it, oh no, this is not going to work. And then opening our game up here to shoot our meteor. And you'll notice the particles are there. We see our meteor effect in the remote scene tree. And after however much lifetime your particle system had, once they all slowly fade out, our meteor effect will disappear automatically. So once it stops emitting, we erase ourselves in this process function of the meteor effect. Cool. That's it for this episode, guys. It was oddly long for just creating a simple particle system, but I think it can look cool if you adjust it to your proper settings. For instance, I need to make these particles a bit bigger. They're way too small and they don't look very good in my opinion. So just go ahead, tweak the particle system as you wish, and I'll see you all in the next episode.